So over the last few weeks, I've been digging into file management in an Angular application. And as a continuation of that exploration, I wanted to see if I could use the file reader class to allow the user to drag and drop a text file onto my Angular application, which would then read and render the contents of that text file completely on the client side. So to see this in action, I will select a text file here. And you'll see that I have this call to action. And you can see with this pink border here uh, that I actually have a drop zone that covers the entire browser viewport. And that will be important when we look at the code. Uh, but then when I drop the file, you'll see that it renders to the, uh, to the view here. And one thing that you'll notice is that I'm logging calls to the ng do check lifecycle method on the app component. This is an indication of how often the change detection digests are being fired. So what you'll notice again is that if I grab a file here is that I'm only triggering change detection when I actually change the state of that uh, drop zone and I'm not continuously firing the drag event or I'm, I should say I'm not continuously triggering change detection as the drag event continues to fire as I drag around uh, the file here. So let's take a look at the uh, code to see how this all works. The app component for this demo is extremely simple. Um, essentially, all it does is conditionally render the file content, but the app component doesn't actually uh, get involved in getting that file content. All it's doing is rendering this file drop component. The file drop component, for the sake of this demo, manages the entirety of the drag and drop event lifecycle and simply emits a text drop event with the content of that file. I then take that content and save it here into the view model so that I can then render it on the page. So essentially, I'm allowing the file drop component to exist in the application at all times and then manage its own visibility within the browser viewport. And for the sake of this demo, I found it simple to keep all of that in the same place. And it also makes it uh, easier to coordinate some of the drag and drop events, which you'll see are a little bit of a, of a fun adventure slash nightmare. So let's take a look at this file drop component to see how it works. Uh, the view for this file drop component is incredibly simple, uh, but the code behind this component is actually fairly complex. I'll try to walk through it as best that I can, uh, but mostly you'll have to look at it in your own time. Uh, in order to simplify the drag event life cycles, what I'm going to do is open up this drag shield as a layer that covers the entire browser viewport and essentially acts as a sink for all drag events. So if we look at what this drag shield is in the uh, less file, uh, what we can see is that it is a um, absolutely positioned layer that stretches all the way from the bottom to the top to the right and left and sits at an index above everything else. So essentially the drag shield, when the drag operation is in play, becomes the only node in the entire DOM tree that is accessible to the user, right? If we jump back into the browser and we look here and we, again, drag a file, what you'll see is that pink border covers everything. So the H1 here and the H2 and this code and this pre, none of these are actually receiving mouse events because all these mouse events are being captured by this drag shield. And because of the way the drag events work in the browser, this actually simplifies things quite uh, a great deal. Um, drag enter and drag leave events, unlike the mouse enter and mouse leave events, bubble up through the DOM, which means that as you bind to the drag enter and drag leave events, you have to manage those events bubbling up from all of the descendant nodes as well as to the target uh, on which you're bound, which makes things very complicated. This drag shield simplifies that greatly because it's empty, so it has no children, has no descendant nodes, and it's the only node that's accessible to the mouse while it's being rendered, which makes, again, everything a little bit easier to reason about. So how does this all work? So let's jump down into our ng on init, and then we can traverse the, the code flow from there. So first what we're gonna do is set up our window events. So essentially when the file drop component is rendered on the page, the first thing it does is start listening to the drag over event on the window. So essentially this will help us detect when a user first drags a file from their desktop over the browser viewport. Now, you'll notice that we are taking care to bind this event handler outside of the Angular zone. As I alluded to before, 
the drag event fires continuously as the user mouses the file over the browser viewport. Normally that wouldn't matter, but because Angular automatically triggers change detection during uh, event triggering, we don't want to be triggering change detection for every single drag event that's fired. So we're having to bind that outside the Angular event in order to minimize our change detection digests. Now, once we listen for the drag over event on the window, let's jump to that, uh, what we will do is take a look at the event to see if it's something that we should respond to. Now this is something we can't really do in a cross-browser compliant way, but essentially for the sake of the expiration, what I was trying to do was look at the file, see if it's a text file type, and if it wasn't, then don't respond to it. So in Chrome, for example, if I attempt to drag an image here, you'll see that the image doesn't do anything uh, because the app knows it's not a text file and therefore won't respond to it. Now, again, this was just for the expiration. There's actually quite a downside to doing that in that if I drop this file, you'll see that the browser now attempts to load it. Whereas if I take a text file, you'll see that I drop it. It doesn't uh, allow the browser to load it. So really what you wanna do is always respond to files and then simply validate them on the drop, not on the drag. And of course, uh, not all browsers have access to the file metadata during the drag events. Safari and IE can't see the file. They can only tell that there's a drag operation in play. So once they've dragged over the window and we see that they have a file, we then tear down the window events. We remove the window bindings and we set up all the events on our drag shield. So if we jump down to that, what you'll see is we now listen for the drag over, drag leave, and the drop events on our drag shield element. Now you'll notice that we don't have to run these outside of the Angular zone, and that's because they're being bound in response to the window event, and the window event was bound outside of the Angular zone. So at this point, we're actually still outside of the Angular zone, which means that when we bind these event handlers, they are also bound outside of the Angular zone. Now, what we're doing at this point is listening for essentially the drop event to handle the file or the leave event. Now, because the browser, uh, because the drag shield covers the entire browser viewport, this drag leave here essentially means that the user has dragged out of the browser viewport as well. And when that happens, you can see that we tear down the bindings on the drag shield and then reestablish the bindings on the window. So this kind of resets us. Uh, to our original state where we then listen for drag events. But let's take a look at the drop event. Uh, or is it handle shield drop? So this is when the user drops the file on the actual drag shield. We have to prevent the default so that the browser doesn't attempt to open the file in the browser. Again, we sort of go back to that reset where we unbind the drag shield events, we rebind the window events, but really the whole uh, point here is that we now attempt to omit the dropped file content. If we jump to that, we attempt to get the file from the drop event, which may not always be possible. Then we check to see if it is a text mime type, and if it's not, so if the user dropped an image, for example, we're just gonna return out and ignore that. Now at this point, if we have a file and the file is of type text that we think we can read, now we're gonna go ahead and use that file reader that I talked about earlier to try and read in the content of the file. To do that, we're gonna be calling the read as text and passing it the file that was dropped. But before that, we have to then bind some event handlers so that we can listen for the uh, ready state or the, the state on the file reader. In particular, we wanna listen for that on load event, which will get us the text content of the file in this reader.result, which I'm then going to emit as part of my event emitter. Now this text drop events event emitter is exactly what our app component is listening for here in this text drop event, which will then take that file content and render it to the page. So there's a lot of code here. Uh, dealing with drag and drop is in and of itself like 90% of the complexity of this demo. Uh, the file reader stuff is itself, you know, just a handful of lines of code. Um, so if you only want to care about reading file input, for example, using the file reader, you know, it's not much more than that. But doing this in the context of user, user interactions that involve drag and drop, obviously there's a significantly uh, larger amount of code and I'll let you go through that. It's a little bit hard to walk through, but hopefully you got the gist
uh, what we're trying to do here. You know, again, if I refresh here, uh, right now, if we look at the elements on the page, what you'll see is that the file drop component is always there, but is display none. And then when we drag a file, you'll see that it goes to display flex down here. Um, this uh, drag shield now covers the entire viewport and that allows it to capture every single mouse event uh, that is now being uh, used in the application, which allows us to capture that drop event, which allows us to read the file content, emit it, and then render it into the app component. So anyway, this is just a fun code kata for me and uh, trying to get a little bit more familiar with the file APIs and the event uh, APIs for drag and drop. And um, anyway, hopefully it uh, was at least interesting.